so we're here this week with Matthew, our branch manager, and thought it might be fruent to speak about the rental market, if that's the right, Matt. Yeah. So first and foremost, how are you finding things with activity, tenants coming forwards, landlords looking to rent their properties out? Well, I mean, it's, it's a mixed bag, uh, depending on which perspective you look at it. Um, there are a lot of uh, news articles demonising landlords. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the enemy. I don't believe that could be further from the truth. Um, okay. We as a nation, I believe, need a healthy private rented sector. Um, but the, I think the biggest problem at the moment is facing a lot of landlords isn't letting the property. That's just a formality. Um, it's the ever increasing rates on interest. Mm -hmm. I was speaking to a landlord only a week ago where they'd got consent to let, their job took them away. Uh, they were paying 0.84% of their interest rate. Okay. His fixed term of his rate comes to an end November this year. Yeah. I booked him to see our financial advisor, Patrick, and it's increased to over 6%, nearly Blimey. 7 He goes, Matt, I can't afford to be a landlord. Mm -hmm. I was like, I understand that. And that's unfortunate. That's another property coming out of the private rent sector. Yeah. So the, you said about demonising, I suppose, mm -hmm. landlords. Do you think that's perceived by some of the public may in the media by obviously the topic at the moment with inflation mortgage rates increasing i suppose it is isn't it yeah i yeah. mean i think you know some people may have the perception that their their landlords uh, increasing the rents just because they can and taking advantage of market conditions mm -hmm. i'm not naive enough to think that there might be some unscrupulous landlords that do that um, but the majority of landlords I've ever dealt with in my career are good, honest people. They just want to do right by the tenant, by the property, and right by their their investment. The what well, it's not just interest rates. The the ripple effect of inflation. If you look at contractors' invoices, materials for works, the hourly rate for or the, the day job rate for that contractor mm. yeah. all increased, which then have a knock on consequence. Mm to then increase in the rent to offset mm. that cost. Coupled with the fact of section four of the finance, section 24 of the finance act, where landlords now can't offset certain bits of their tax liability like they used to, means it's less financially attractive to be a landlord mm. to offset that, the increased rents, which there's only one loser in all of this, and that's the poor tenant. Yeah, so the, it's a good point. So with existing tenancies, mm -hmm. I heard in the news earlier, um, I think, I don't know who they are, I don't know where they live, so apologies for that. But um, they had in their contracts that yearly or every other year their, in, their rent would be increasing by 5%. Um, their rent's now actually increased by 12%. Now, how would that come about? I appreciate you not familiar with the story no. but or where it's come from, but it's yeah. just something I heard in the news. Is that something of the norm or uh, no it depends on the context so if you're hypothetically in that scenario is a three-year fixed term agreement yeah with annual rent increases at the end of month uh, year one and the end of year two renters reform bills looking to remove such clause um, in that regard that's a story for another day yeah <laughs> the but if it's within the contract the rent is going to increase five percent no, that's a fixed term agreement that's agreed. Mm. Both parties have agreed contractually to increase. The so you're rent. covered as the tenant yeah. by the fixed term contract. Yeah, yeah. you are. Yeah, that, that is, you know, that's why I do not. I, I, I like that clause in principle for that reason. Um, that rents increase, you know, five percent. Um, that's better. So, yeah, the twelve percent increases is, is a significant. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, um, but I've heard of increases, unfortunately, from less scrupulous landlords mm. on some groups that I'm on on social media where it's significantly higher than that. Sure. Uh, okay. But yeah, no, I, I, I believe that tenant should check the terms of their tenancy yep. and uh, have Haven't a Haven't got their contact details, no. unfortunately. So, but, um, with, so that's the landlord side in a way with increased in rents, etc. Obviously the cost of living at the moment, that is more than likely going to be affecting the tenants as well. Absolutely. So in some instances, landlords may be issuing what's called a section 21 mm -hmm. to tenants. Mm -hmm. um, might be quite good to know what section 21 is and whether or not they're legal still or yeah, they, what um, the plan is. I mean, section 21 is the, the legal notice currently to for a landlord to recover possession of the property. 
um, what the media have coined no fault eviction. Um, they are still law. Um, under the Renters Reform Bill, they're looking to uh, remove that. So the landlord, in essence, has to now give a reason. And there's defined reasons. Moving back into the property, yep. selling the property, persistent late payment, rent arrears, antisocial uh, behaviour on behalf of the tenant. So, um, but in an ever increasing number, since certainly not just the rises of inflation, but the announcement of the first reading of the Renters Reform Bill, I've seen an ever increasing number of landlords now exercise their right to recover possession of a property back through the method of Section 21. Um, and it's for a variety of reasons. Sometimes for some landlords, it's to sure the broke camel's back. Ever increasing amount of regulation, they just go, not worth it anymore. Yeah. Others, it's financial, where it's just not financially viable for them to be uh, a landlord. And some have just thought, you know, I'm just going to cash in and take my take my money. It's not as doing as well in property, just due into house prices yeah. changing or certainly plateauing. Some say going backwards, and I'm going to put it into another investment vehicle. I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? You're talking about rental prices. So, see, you're in the office on a day-to-day -day basis. Put a rental property on the market. I think we're getting inundated interests with every single property we put on. We're having open houses booked for two-hour slots. Yeah. What would you advise prospective tenants to do to maybe get themselves in the best position? Yeah. Um, I think it's... It's, it's real tough. I, I feel for yeah. every tenant that's looking at the moment. Uh, BBC released a statistic only with, yeah, with the last day or two. On average, there's 20 tenants chasing every property. 20. Um, where you go back, say, three years, in certain regions of the country, it's between three and six people changing every property. Yeah. Chasing every property, sorry. So there is a bit of competition, but now it's, it's, a, it's alarming. We've had very recent instances where we received in excess of 100 inquiries. We just had to had to turn the marketing off because we're unable to cope with the volume of phone calls and email traffic. But in answer to your question, what can the tenant do to put themselves in the best possible position? Um, be registered with all the agents, be registered with all the property portals. As soon as you see that property go live, you get that little alert, whether it be an SMS, phone call or email alert, and you think, I like the look of that. Book yourself in as soon as possible. You know, if the agent says, look, I'm only showing this property this day between these times, to the best of your ability, make that appointment. Yeah. You know, move some, juggle some things around because it's going to really sound brutal when I say it. If you don't, there's 19 other people that are. Yeah. yeah, and then they will make it. The agent, that landlord can only let the property once. Yeah. So you've got to try and be as accommodating, as flexible um, as possible. Now, I have had instances where tenants have offered above the current market rate. I'm not a supporter of that action. Uh, I firmly believe best tenant, you know, the rent that we yeah. bring the property to the market for is a fair market rent at any okay. given moment. Um, while some landlords will, will, will like that, you know, like the increase in rent, it's your tenant's prerogative if you, if you wish to do that. It's not something most agents endorse. What about six months up front? Uh, or a 12 month tenancy? You say, look, I'll pay six months up front. Is that something that's gonna so I've known that to be tenants uh you know the, the deal swinger uh, yeah. in this big wide world uh, i feel that like it or not money does talk uh we can talk about that till the cows come home but ultimately the rationale behind it the landlord looks at two things with any tenant is risk risk of damage risk of the arrears. so paying the rental term in advance six nine twelve we've had instances of 24 months rent being paid in one mm -hmm. go with very affluent tenants that alleviates Certainly for the short term, the element of risk for arrears. Uh, damage, then you've got to start looking at other aspects, smoking, pets, children, number of occupiers, demographic of tenant, etc. Quick one on demographic of tenant, pets. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember when I was looking for rental properties at the time, your, your market would be narrowed. Mm -hmm. Now, are you finding certain landlords are now slightly more receptive to things like that? Um, throughout my career, the, you, know, you have the ones that are very open, very yep. sympathetic to having a, a tenant with a pet. Now, very good, reasonable pet owners, you would never know there was an animal there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're fabulous. 
Um, and I can think of some current tenants of mine that are just fantastic. You know, really house proud, look after the property like it's their own and the pet, lovely family animal. It is like most things in society, it's the, it's the, you know, the, the minority that spoil it for the majority. I've seen a border collie that was bored to cause 13,000 pounds worth of damage to a property. Okay, that's an extreme. That landlord was open to pets. It was a portfolio landlord, had five properties. Carte Blanche after that, no pets. And mm. it was only because of one, one bad experience. apple. Yeah. Um, but the vast majority of tenants are, you know, with pet owners are very, very good in my experience. Um, but unfortunately, go back to the statistic from the BBC of 20 tenants ch chasing every property. And as I say, landlord looks at risk. Best position, yeah. The, you know, that unfortunately those tenants are disadvantaged compared to non-pet yeah. owners. Good insight. Uh, just, I Thanks, just think Matt. it's, uh, I, I feel for all of them. I generally believe we in this country need to build more houses, more mm -hmm. social element, more homes to buy, more build to rent. Yeah, that will alleviate a lot of problems. No. Good insight. It's worth to note that Matt is not only the branch manager, but he's actually the regional representative for Kent um, with Arla, yes, aren't right. you? So any questions anyone's got, please don't hesitate to get in contact with Matt. We've also got Patrick in the office as well, our mortgage advisor. So any questions people have got on mortgage rates, inflation, certainly a worthwhile conversation to be having. And um, yeah, for any other rental needs, please get in touch with us. Thank you. Thank you.